Hello. Welcome to Cartoon Clearance. I'm Meg. And I'm Dan. And I do not have the energy to think of a silly Ramble Pants pun today because I hated this movie. It was Dougal. Take it away, Daniel. I agree. And also, uh, I I had the I didn't have the energy to think of a pun, but I did have the energy to almost burp into the mic. So <laughs> I apologize. So Dougal was actually a children's television program. And I say program because it was from England and it also aired in France. I believe it was like a, a dual production company sort of thing. Originally called The Magical Roundabout. So in 2005, a adaptation was created for the European audiences. This included the likes of actors and well-to-do people, including Kylie Minogue, Ian McKellen, Sir Ian McKellen, Tom Baker, Bill Nye, not Bill Nye, Bill Nye, as I thought, <laughs> and and so on. Then, according to William H Macy, who would later star in the American version. Uh, studio executive for the Weinstein Company, Harvey Weinstein, saw the film and immediately wanted to do a version for American audiences. Of course. But because Magical Roundabout was virtually unknown in North America, an audacious overhaul of the source material was performed. And this includes replacing most of the English cast with actors the American public was more familiar with including Whoopi Goldberg, Jimmy Fallon, Jon Stewart, Kevin Smith, Bill Hader, etc. Then, the uh, American cartoonist Butch Hartman, who you may know from creating Fairly Odd Parents and various other cartoons for the Nickelodeon station, was brought on board to rewrite the storyline and some of the dialogue to accommodate a slew of pop culture references and jokes which included mostly farts. Then, the sequencing and editing of the movie was toyed with and condensed in certain ways to fit the streamlined storyline that Hartman and the executives had created. And as a result... We got this monstrosity. We got, we got this. It's just a piece of garbage. Nobody liked it. Everyone saw through it. Very cynical. And after that, it's just been a... Uh, a Road to Nowhere. Meg, would you like to give us a little summary about Excuse me as a burp, Dougal? I suppose. So, Dougal takes place in a world where animals, humans, and certain inanimate objects like toys and trains or something are all sentient, can speak, and can and are friends. Or, I mean, at least certain ones because some things don't speak and some things do speak and there's really no clear distinction on why. So, Dougal is our protagonist, and he, he is a floor rug of a dog that's best friends with a little human girl named Florence, as we are so helpfully informed by the narrator, because lord knows they don't do enough showing over telling. Um, <laughs> Dougal is also a terrible person who is so obsessed with eating candy that he plots to rob an innocent salesman. However, his premeditated theft goes awry, and he ends up unleashing the evil wizard Zebad who looks like, um, if anyone knows Zumbinis, he looks like, he, he looks like one of the spring, sh one of the spring Zumbinis. Um, <laughs> so Zebad had been sealed away by the good Zumbini wizard, whose name was Zebedee. He was sealed into a carousel that is, for some reason, the centerpiece of town. And Zebad wants to freeze the sun and turn the world into a winter wonderland of death. But... He needs three magic diamonds that are hidden around the pretty small world to do it. So those same three magic diamonds are what can seal him back up again, and luckily, the good wizard Zebedee, I know it's probably going to be confusing to keep those names straight, I thought they were just called the same thing for a while there. Zebedee luckily has the map with the diamonds' locations. In order to save Florence, who was frozen inside the carousel and is dying of the slowest case of hypothermia ever, Dougal must make the perilous trek and discover the meaning of responsibility and teamwork, or not. Yeah, no, no, not really at all, actually. Yeah. Spoiler alert, he doesn't learn that at all. Joining him on his boring quest are Dylan the, I think, a stoner rabbit? It, it's kind of hard to tell what some of these characters were supposed to be. He was, a, he was definitely a rabbit. He was definitely a rabbit. 
I read that he was modeled and named after Bob Dylan, which oh, I guess okay. makes sense, but whatever. Oh, there is also Ermintrude the Cow, who dreams of being an opera star. Brian the Snail, who is in love with Ermintrude. His name was- wait, wait, wait. His name was Brian? His, I guess his name was Brian. I, I never heard his name <laughs> during the entire day. And Weren't they I mean, also I, forgettable? I don't- well, yeah, but, like, <laughs> Brian the Snail- that sounds like something I would make up, and, um, uh, Br Brian the Snail. <laughs> you would- I'm you sorry. would- you would- you would make a much more interesting Brian the Snail, I gotta say. So, I guess there's also a talking train that Zebedee summoned for them to travel in, and, um, what follows is a very tedious 80 or so minutes of just straight col cultural references, plot holes, and- Forgettable slash hateable characters. So, yeah. Daniel, if you would like to kick us off on your thoughts on the series. Well, Dougal was my childhood IRL. And, oh, uh, oh, really? No, no, it wasn't. I'd say, uh, once again, this was my idea to do it. And my reason for discussing and watching this movie was because in 2005, when the trailers for Dougal, I guess, were just coming out, I, I would see them. And I'm like, okay, this movie looks like interesting and then i never saw it ever again like maybe i saw the ending on tv probably a couple of years ago but i never saw dougal i thought it looked like crap <clears throat> it does but uh and i'm like okay this is bad i remember in the trailer like a couple lord of the rings jokes which i guess was very big at the time to do a parody of and in retrospect i think i remember different takes of the actors delivering their lines or even different actors in general I, I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I'm going to have to find a trailer later for Dougal. And Maybe the trailer you myself. saw was for the UK version. Maybe. I don't know, because that, that happens sometimes. Like how I feel cheated and lied to about uh, The Incredibles not doing a scene where Mr. Incredible's trying to get his belt on. <laughs> I, 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 that's another discussion. Anyway, uh, yes, this movie is terrible in every way imaginable. Uh, the, Dougal has no arc as a character, and... You know what? You don't even need an arc sometimes in a in a movie, but they act like he had one, and it's so infuriating. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, you don't. You are not a good person, and you never will be. No. You are terrible. You are dirt compared to the salt of the earth people who actually do all the work for you. Yep. Like, you can say what you want about Dylan, Urban, Shrewd, and Brian. At least they do stuff. stuff. Done. They get so much stuff done, and Dougal's <laughs> like, I, I didn't do anything. And then Dougal acts like he's being burdened. Like, isn't someone going to set up the tents for me? And they're like, uh, no, Dougal, you have to do that yourself. And he's like, oh. By the way, what's for dinner? I'm hungry. Who's going to make dinner? It's not going to be me. And then meanwhile, he's eating. Yeah. He's eating candy. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'd say, like, the only, the only part of the movie that seemed like he, like, he had some like character to him was how he gets captured by uh, Zbad and he's being tortured but the guy doesn't know how to torture it's like what would be the worst thing I could do to you is like feeding me candy which I'm like okay you know what if it wasn't a terrible character that'd be a cute moment yeah but he's so awful and stupid that it just like it, it's a it's like a neutral moment for me where I'm like I just don't care for me it was probably it, I think it was actually negative because just <laughs> I was so frustrated because like you you have better things to be worrying about you know like the eating the candy itself wouldn't be so bad until like his friends come and rescue him and he's like no wait go away like give me just a couple more seconds he's getting the lollipops out next and I'm just like yeah your your so-called best friend is freezing to death yeah slowly Sl the worst <laughs> that's the worst torture like Get your priorities straight here. Oh my god. Like And there's so much with this movie that just like is like no one thought, did they? Like the fact that Zebedee was like, I'm gonna hide my arch nemesis in this carousel. And then you know what? Put it in the middle of town. Yep. And then on top of that, put one of the three crystals that's needed to seal him away also in the carousel. It's like why? Why, Zebedee? Why? And I think we could both agree that this movie should have been about one character who really stood out as like it's not he's not even the saving grace but it makes me feel sad because he was so fun. I yeah, evil 
I, I want to call him Zebedee still. No, Z-Bad. <laughs> Think of Sinbad. <laughs> Z-Bad. Well, like, he, he needed an evil henchman, of course, and so he animated this, um, this toy soldier who had been positioned on the carousel, and he's like, you're going to be my henchman now. And this soldier, who was named Sam, was not... Like, he really wasn't evil, but he was kind of trying his best to to live up to the job that Zebad had given him. And he was the only actually funny character and the only even likable character. He he also had an arc. Like, a yeah. really intro And I'm like, this movie should have been about him. Not because he's the most enjoyable character, but because the movie revolves around him. And if this was a good movie, I'd make a metaphor about how he lives on a carousel and it revolves. But this movie was terrible. Yeah. So, too bad movie. You don't get my metaphor. No, it was it was such a shame because he was the one spark of integrity, maybe, I would say, yeah. in this movie. And, like, spoiler alert, the reward that he gets for going through this arc where he's trying to, you know, struggle with uh, the expectation of evil that's been placed on him and live up to his duties, he finally ends up turning against Zebad and revolting and being like, no, I gotta protect. I, I gotta protect yeah. these diamonds or crystals or whatever. And so he revolts and Zebad kills him and then realizes that the last diamond is in his chest. It's his heart, basically. And so he, and he rips it out. He rips it out. <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, when balance has been restored to nature, Zebedee rewards this toy soldier by just kind of plunking him back on the carousel and he goes on in his mechanical motions forevermore. And his, I was his so mechanical sad. purgatory. Yeah. I was so sad. I was like, I wanted you I, I wanted you to like have some kind of closure or reward for your heroics and for being an actual good character. But yeah, everybody like else. Any, like anything other than just acting as if this was normal. And the thing that w that threw me off was in the beginning, I don't think they even established that there was a soldier on top of the carousel. No, I, I don't didn't think notice. so. And so there's the scene where z is like, I'm free. And he's walking around in this tundra he's created. And then there's just a toy soldier lying next to him. And he's like, you, you'll do as my henchman. And I'm like, where'd this soldier yeah, come right? from? Yeah, right? Like, I don't... Maybe it was just I wasn't paying attention, but I did not remember them establishing that the carousel had his toy soldier. I don't think they did. Or doing an overt job of it. I don't think so. And I think that might have been one of the places where it was very noticeable, the, the way they cut it and moved it yeah. around. I haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen the original, so I can't yeah. compare it. I don't know what they changed, what they moved. But it is a huge pet peeve of mine when people when um, broadcasters will import something from another country and then splice it up take like liberties. that. Take liberties. Take liberties with Because in my story. opinion, in my opinion, it is not your right to mess with that story like that. You know? No. If you're going to, if you want to broadcast something, then broadcast it as it is. And it also really makes me mad when they're like, oh, that was a UK show. It's still in English, but we have to redub it in American English because otherwise yeah. no one's going to care. Like, I don't think you're... I, Jimmy I don't Fallon's think, on the rise. I don't think they're giving people enough credit. And I think that it's also a discredit to kids to say like, oh, this they're person says enough. trainers instead of sneakers. They're too stupid to even yeah. guess what that means. And, you know, no one's going to tell them. Like, you know, that kind of thing would broaden kids' horizons a little bit, too. Yeah. So it, it really frust it really frustrates me when I see stuff like that, whether it's in anime or other movies. Ay. And the thing is that I think the big example is when Harry Potter, the books came over here, or even the movies, too, they changed some things around. And you know what? When you read that, you're kind of like, okay, some things don't work as good as others. Maybe I like this American wording better or that, or maybe I like the British. But for the most part, that product is intact. This right. is like clean slate. Let's just do whatever. And it and it really shows cuz there are scenes where the characters just like, "Where are we going next? I hope it's not a place with lava." And then they're just at like a, a volcano surrounded by lava. And that was their transition to the next spot. And I'm thinking I'm like, in the original they must have had some better transition because they probably had a completely different story. But in this one this is all guessing of course mm -hmm. but this one is just like 
Oh shoot, we forgot the next scene has lava in it. Oh, just say, um, uh, maybe we're going to a lava place next. And it's like, oh my gosh, you guys suck. Oh yeah, you the writing, suck. the however it was that they changed it, it is so lazy and yeah. just, it, it feels so patched together and disjointed and, oh my gosh, it was just, for the first bit of it, it was so boring boring but it, it wasn't was so lackluster. like it was it was boring but i was just kind of like okay whatever and then it reached a point where i hit my I, I hit my threshold for i guess what i was willing to sit and tolerate quietly and i just i just started hating it because just the references and the stupid jokes just pile up and pile up and pile up and then you're just like i can't take it anymore you're all horrible and i hate you and i hope you die oh it's so bad and i just like to make one last remark on sam before we move oh, on yeah. to another point before i forget sam was apparently created by zebedee the good wizard to protect the carousel mm -hmm. and there's a point where zebedee meets up with the rest of the Dougal crew, I'm going to call them, and sees Zbad and Sam, and sees that Sam's with Zbad, and he goes, you don't have to be a bad guy. You just have to look in your heart to see what you want. And that's the whole thing about, oh, he's got a crystal inside him. Right. So I think this is further proof that the movie should have been about Sam. <laughs> and it honestly would have been a really good movie. A much better children's movie about a dog that jeopardizes everyone's life because he wants candy and then at the end of the movie realized like getting back to the narrator the narrator says this mo it's judy dench by the way dame judy dench it's like this movie is about togetherness and friendship and no it's not it is not nobody likes dougal like everyone in the party is like dougal you're horrible you're a horrible person go away and that opinion really doesn't change at the very end of the movie, they have a shoehorned in, like, Guys, we gotta work together! Yeah. But it feels like nothing worked up to that, it's, except maybe one scene, but it's played off as, like, a huge joke. And then still nothing comes out. The thing about the togetherness, I would say, is that Ermintrude, Brian the Snail, and Dylan are together. They have togetherness. Right. Because they actually work together. But Dougal just does whatever the... <laughs> censor my mouth whatever he wants <laughs> and like doesn't care so at the end of the movie he's just like i'll work together but he doesn't really work together he just sort of like rides the coattails of everyone else's togetherness yep he just sucks he just sucks you don't even see him learning from any of this over the course of the movie he's just the same snot-nosed little douchebag the whole time until he has this one moment towards the end when i guess he thinks Florence is dead, but of course it's a children's movie, so she's not, even though she's been freezing to death for like three days. Um, yeah. And he's like, oh, I am I was so s stupid and irresponsible, and I didn't really see what was important, and I'll never have any candy again. But you never saw him learning that over the course yeah. of the whole movie. There was no progression of, huh, maybe I should start taking things a little more seriously. At all. To talk about a good movie... The, thinking about that reminds me of Hercules, the Disney Hercules yeah. movie. You have the whole arc of Hercules is, I want to be a hero. Mm -hmm. So you have a whole middle section of that movie where he's like, I'm going to do heroic things. And then Zeus has to break it to him. He's like, that's not the point. That's not the point. And he's like, what? What do you mean? And then he reaches that point where he does realize what it means to be a hero. Not like overtly, but he like he has it ingrained because he loses his powers. And then the column collapses on Meg, whom he loves. And then that's like when he like lifts the, you know, the column off her. And then he gets his powers back. And then that's when it's like, oh, you're a hero. No, actually, he got his well, powers later back. later on in the movie when he, he risked the death. Yeah, he got his powers back because he was willing to sacrifice himself for somebody else. Yeah. I think that scene, too, with the column, though, is like a good scene that would I, I would compare to the Florence, like, I'm so sorry scene. Because you also have that in her... But whatever, that was a good arc with an interesting way of having regret tied into it. Right. Like, I was so foolish to not realize how good I had it or, or to realize how important you are to me. Yeah. And I think the other problem with the movie is that because it is inherently a... It's a, it's a long-established universe and certain things I come off like they want me to accept that the world is this way without establishing it. Like... 
who any of the characters are. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Like, oh, how do these people met? That's not as important as certain other things. Like, why is why is Zebat? Why do Zebat and Zebedee hate each other? Or even why is it that Zebedee? I I can't even remember who is who anymore. <laughs> Like, they call Zebedee's name three times, and then he falls from the sky. And I'm like, um, okay. And I'm like, in a kid's show, that would be, like, the way to solve any of the problems. They'd be like, we gotta call Zebedee, and then they do. But, like, this is all assumption, and it just confuses me. (laughs) Right. And I think that wouldn't be quite such a... I I think that wouldn't be quite such an issue if it was a better movie. Like, you know, I don't know why any of these characters are the way they are. Like, why is this a a blend of characters? Which maybe doesn't necessarily matter. And maybe part of it is because it was based off of a comic strip. So you don't need, like, you, you're not necessarily going to get that information from a movie. And that's fine, as long as the story that you tell is still good. But everything just felt so pointless because it was so stupid and so inane and, like, basically the entire movie hinged entirely on cultural references and like and, silly and little jokes. jokes and and far and jokes. like none of them were funny none of them were funny i think there might be i can't even remember it but there was probably one time where i actually oh you know what it was it was when they were fighting the skeletons and i think you you pointed out to me where the skeletons are reanimating themselves and, like, one of them's like, bring out your dead. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I, I forget what the, There's, like, a couple, like... They, everything the skeletons said were cultural references. So it was already like, ugh. Oh, but my like, gosh, I th- know. There was that. But that scene, like... We we were counting for... We, we tried to count a little bit how many cultural references were in... Ju- like, just in that scene. And we hit so many. We just stopped counting. We just stopped counting after, like, five or six of them. Because we were like, I don't even care anymore. Some of them were flying by way too fast to even count and register in your brain. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. Is this is oh, not another one. Yeah, it was too much. It was too much, and it was covering the lack of substance in the movie itself. It's just like it, none of the none of the lines of dialogue were good. No. None of them were – none of the jokes were funny, and it seemed like – None of it really was forwarding the story that much, unless it was spoken by Zbad because he was being like a villain. So of course he's like, "I need the crystal. Let's go get the crystal." Right. It's like, okay, that's a way to move the plot forward, I guess. But like, I'll say the one thing I guess that I was actually impressed by was that certain things did come full circle. Like, the movie starts off and Ermintrude is giving a recital. Right. And Dougal ruins and interrupts it. Okay. Whatever. You know what you think? Honestly, of a, a movie of this caliber, that's just a throwaway scene. At the end of the movie, Dougal and his crew are back at the carousel and they realize that, like, Ermintrude needs to sing to break up the ice. Right. And so I'm like, oh, that actually was interesting. Because, like, the whole movie, she talks about how she wants to be a star and how she she never got to sing at her recital. Right. But it also was never, like, a main focus of the movie that this character, like, it just seemed like something the character wanted to do. Right. But was never really important. It was just, it, it just sounded like whining and moaning because of the movie. It was terrible. Yeah, nobody stood out in a good way. I was impressed to see them actually like, come back to the fact that she was supposed to be giving a recital. Right. And the other thing, speaking of the recital, is this movie's loaded. Maybe not <laughs> loaded, but it's got a bunch of licensed music in it. For no reason. Right from the get right from the get go. Yeah, for no reason, which I'm like, this is definitely a dubbed scene. Like Dylan the Rabbit just starts singing You Really Got Me by the Kinks. Right. Or at the end of the movie they play Mr. Blue Sky. Mm-hmm. Bunch of, and like there's a bunch of other songs too, and it's like this is all terrible. Like, it's just not good. And some characters, you can even tell, weren't supposed to talk because they don't even move their lips when they talk. Yep. Kevin Smith the moose who Yeesh, farts. Yeah, that's... Calling you out. Oh my gosh. Just It was also excessive and not good. And um, I think that we don't really have that much more to say about it, probably. I say friends don't let friends watch Duel alone. Yeah, I would say that too. Which is why we watched it together. 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 <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. But it was really boring. The only character who had heart was Bill Hader's character, who is Sam, the, the toy soldier. And he promptly gets his heart ripped out of his chest. Like... <sighs> like, comment, and subscribe if you liked us or hated us. Or maybe you liked Dougal, which I don't think anyone did. And remember, your only holiday will be death. Will be death. That's not how we sound. But all right, goodbye. We're discount ramble pants. Thanks Bye. for listening. <laughs> <laughs>